I am so excited to tell you the theme of the week. I know, I know I say that every week, but really every week I am excited to tell you what your challenges will be for the upcoming week in our virtual distance learning art studio. So this week, remember we've been working on careers in art, and this week we're going to be learning about how to become an artist. I know, you're an artist all the time. Every time you make something, you're an artist. However, did you know that it can be a career? This is called fine art. You can be a fine artist. A fine artist typically means that you have gone to school to learn more about your craft or your skill. So if I'm going to be a painter, I'll go to college to learn how to become a better painter. Or another way that I can learn is something called an apprenticeship. That's when I work with a painter already, someone who already does this job, and I work with them to learn their techniques. So this week, I'm going to give you four different options to become a fine artist. As we have been doing in the last couple of weeks, we're going to Mrs. Han's online art studio. And this assignment is for April 27th to May First, You can see that the theme of the week is fine arts. We have our choice board and how to share, just like we did the last couple of weeks. You'll watch this video that I'm doing right now, which will be located right here on the third slide. Now you're going to choose between one of these four options. You only need to do one, but here are the options right over there. Fiber art, being a fiber artist, and we're going to be giving the option of weaving for that one. You can become a sculptor or a printmaker or a painter. Those are four options for you to become a fine artist this week. Once you create something, you'll be sharing it with the rest of the class or myself using Seesaw if you are in kindergarten through second grade or Flipgrid if you are in third through fifth. So let's go over these four options real quick. The first one is being a sculptor. So if you want to, or if you don't know what a sculpture, a sculptor is, or what a sculpture is, you can watch this video by Sesame Street. It's actually pretty good. It's pretty funny. I like it. Um, and then I give you some different ideas. So I kind of went around this idea of dinosaurs because we haven't done anything with dinosaurs lately and I thought that'd be fun. So on my blog, I have a link right up here to this cool paper sculpture. And then I have a friend of mine who, um, just did dinosaurs in her classroom, her virtual classroom as well, using paper towel tubes and cardboard. And so you could go to Cassie Stevens blog by clicking here. She is a teacher down in Tennessee, or you can click up here in the everyday, which is a blog that will bring you right to the steps of how to make this cool looking sculpture as well. And May Day is happening. May Day is on May 1st. And there is this quick little video of what May Day means. But basically, on May 1st, you can go around and drop off little baskets of goodies for friends. You can just drop it off at their front door and then skedaddle out of there. And that is a really fun thing to do. May Day basket delivery tips right here. These two ladies are really funny. Watch this video. And then if you would like to become a, a visual artist, or I'm sorry, a fine artist, you can weave a basket by using paper. Or I did one here where I um, looked at craft project ideas, this blog right here, and kind of looked at what they did and made a couple of changes and really learned a lot. So I shared that learning with you here in this, um, these pictures. Or the last option is another weaving and it's just using a paper cup and I have a link right here you can push play and watch a messy art room and um, her making a paper cup then 
to become a painter. There was just so many ideas out there. So I thought, you know what, use what I have because I have a lot of really good ideas. So I have sent you, uh, here's the link to my painting playlist on YouTube. But I did to choose two favorites that I really like. This is a first grade landscape. You can use crayons and oil pastels and then paint over it with watercolor. And then here's a really fun one that I've done with older kids um, of how to draw a cat. And again, down here is the link to the playlist for all things painting. And printmaking was much the same. I just grabbed a bunch off from my playlist, which is right here. And um, just some of my favorite ones, because printing is when you make that same shape over and over. You like make it um, repeating, basically. So I have a printmaking idea using q-tips right here and pattern working this is really good for our kindergartners and first graders to work on math as well and then here's some mono prints mono prints means you get one chance you get one print off from it and i have some fun materials like shading cream um, i'm using liquid watercolor here but you can use food coloring i oh and ooh, this one you should probably watch anyways because there's some guest artists there that you might recognize Mr. Willenbring and Miss Gorder. Then down here we have bubble wrap art. So you can print with bubble wrap. And then if you have any of these meat or veggie trays at home, you can use that foam to print as well. So lots of options this week. Good luck choosing. All right, guys, those are some ideas of how to become a fine artist this week. I'm going to give you a little tip for next week though save your art. Don't throw it away. Anything that you're making, save it because there might be an opportunity to use it next week.